Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. This is the second episode of story, and it only takes one person to change history. What if a simple act of kindness results in four of Konoha's best friends? Please hit the subscribe and like buttons. Let's get this party started. Tsume watched the door to her son's room with worry and concern. It had been three days since Kiba came back from the academy in a foul mood. His mood only got worse with each day. She learned of what the last Uchiha did to her son and she could understand why he was acting this way. As an Inuzuka, they were a very prideful in everything. They rarely enjoyed losing or taking being embarrassed easily. According to Naruto, Sasuke would not let up on her son and kept on teasing him. She knew that Kiba could do nothing or risk suspension. Usually, Kiba would just train himself into the ground but he wasn't even doing that. It was time to deal with this and she only knew one way how. She kicked the door to his room open. Kiba jumped and dropped his puppy of the ground. Tsume and her partner, Kuromaru, were looking at the two with a hard glance. She then tossed him two wristband, two ankle bands and a vest. Kuromaru places a small vest next to Akamaru. Put those on now. We have training to do. She ordered. As the sun set over the leaf village, Kiba and Akamaru were sweating a river. They were laid out at the entrance of their house. They were begging for water and they looked like that they were inches away from death. When the two exited, they could barely move due to the weights that they were currently wearing. Tsume then told them to keep up with her and Kuromaru as they began to jog. Kiba followed and tried to keep up. He attempted to use the four legs technique but was told to stop. The mother, son and canines jogged from their home all around the village and back. Kiba thought that it was over until Tsume ordered him to do wine sprints. He and Akamaru did them as they were commanded. She then had them doing line drills. She continued to push him, having him do more drills. By the time the sun set, Kiba and Akamaru were dead tired. Kiba laid there dying when he was splashed with cold water. Kiba sputtered and Akamaru started to shake himself dry. They looked at Tsume as she handed each of them water. As they drank with eagerness, Tsume sat down and waited for them to catch their breath. Once they did, Sume got their attention. Okay Kiba, I know that you were taking some stuff from that Achiha brat and I know that you don't like it but you shouldn't just lie down and take it. You are an Inuzuka, we don't just take shit like that. For the next month, we will be doing these exercises. After the month, I promise, you will dominate that little puissant, Sume said with a smile. Kiba looked at her before smiling at his mother. Miyuki looked at Naruto as he focused on his penmanship. She was wondering what crawled up his butt to put his all in learning. While she didn't mind, she kind of missed her hyper student. That's when she heard Naruto mutter something. She moved closer and listened. He thinks that he could mess with one of my friends? I'm going to show him. He's going to wish that he never did that. I'm going to get better and going to prank his ass so bad. She heard him mutter. She got a grin on his face. Who was she to not help him prank someone? She actually liked when he did that. Kiba and Akamaru were once again lying on the ground. It had been a week and Kiba was wondering if his mother was just punishing him. He was again drenched in water before getting a bottle of water. Tsume watched him and could see that he was starting to have doubts. She just smiled and looked at him. You think that this is not going to work huh? Tsume asked. Kiba looked at his mother with surprise. He was about to deny it but he remembered who he was talking to. Well, it's just that I don't feel any different. Except with a couple of sore muscles. I really don't know what this will do? Can you explain what we are doing? Kiba asked. Sure, just watch me, she said. She stood in front of a log that was hanging from a piece of rope. Kiba watches his mother got into the four legs jutsu before vanishing. She reappeared later in front of the log and slammed her elbow into it. Kiba winced when he heard the log crack. Tsume stood and stopped the log from swinging. She walked back to her son and allowed him to check the log. Kiba did just that and saw that large crack that ran down the log. The log them split in two and fell off the rope. He's shocked by the damage his mother got with just one lunge. He looked at his mother for some answers. You know that the four legs jutsu improves your speed, strength and all-around abilities. Still, shouldn't you train your body some more instead of relying on that jutsu? That's what we're doing. The training I'm having you do is toughen your muscles. They will be screaming but it will also tighten those muscles. So when you do charge forward it would be at a speed that very few can follow. The added effect is that when you use the jutsu, your abilities are doubled, even tripled. Tsume explained. No way? Alright then, let's get back to training. Kiba cheered. Tsume smiled and pushed her son even more. He did not complain. A month had passed for Naruto and Kiba. The training that Kiba had gone through was some of the toughest that he had gone through but he began to see results. 
He couldn't wait to repay Sasuke for what he did to him during the spar. Naruto had also pushed himself and Miyuki was more than happy to push him. He could now put his plan into motion. He had a couple of students keeping a lookout for the instructors or Sasuke. Everyone watched with wide eyes as Naruto got to work with his calligraphy set. The speed that he wrote was amazing and he did not even slow down. He wrote characters on either side of the door frame. He did the same at the door at the bottom of the classroom. When he finished, Naruto then placed a piece of paper at both entrances and hid them. With his work done, Naruto quickly made his way to his seat. The guys who were lookouts also returned to their seats. They were going to see something really funny or a massive failure. It would five minutes of waiting when Sasuke entered from the door to the back. His foot had landed on the piece of paper that Naruto hid. This would trigger the characters that Naruto wrote on the door. As soon as Sasuke stepped through, he was splattered with neon orange paint. It came at him from both sides of the door, covering head to toe with paint. Sasuke was surprised by the sudden attack and sputtered. The fangirls who were following him were in shock while the boys who watched the scene, were laughing their asses off. They couldn't believe that Naruto's plan worked. Sasuke took some paint out of his eyes and looked at the door. He did not see any buckets or wires that would have been tripped. Still, he knew of only one person that would do something like this. He turned his attention to the orange-wearing idiot that was Naruto Uzumaki. This was his doing, he just knew it. He was about to go and beat him senseless but that's when Iruka and Mizuki entered. They saw Sasuke and wondered what was going on. What's going on here? Iruka asked. It was that loser, Naruto. Only he could come up with something like this, Sasuke exclaimed. Iruka looked at Naruto with a glare. Naruto held up his hands. Hey, there are no buckets or wires by the doors. Do you really think I'm that fast to get all that stuff cleaned up once the trap was set? It wasn't me and I dare you to prove that it was. Naruto challenged. Iruka did just that and checked the door. He did not find any wires or buckets. It looked like the trap was set right between the door frames but he did not see anything. There was just no evidence that Naruto set any trap. While this was his signature, he could not punish him if there was no proof. He faced Naruto with an annoyed look. While I can't prove that this was you Naruto, I know what you like to do. You will clean up this mess, Iruka said. Naruto scoffed but he did not argue the punishment. Sasuke was still livid but he could do nothing. He was allowed to go and get cleaned up. He glared at Naruto promising to get back at him for this humiliation. Two days later, the class was outside. Today was sparring and everyone was waiting to go. Sasuke was especially waiting to deal with Naruto. Today was the day that everyone got to choose their opponents. Sasuke was going to pick Naruto and beat him until he couldn't move. He was still angry at him for his little prank. Okay, Kiba Inuzuka, who do you want to face? The instructor asked. I want to fight Sasuke, Kiba said while cracking his knuckles. Sasuke gave Kiba an annoyed look but he wasn't going to back down from him. He even thought that he would get to embarrass Kiba again and get even with Naruto at the same time. Sasuke just stepped into the ring and faced Kiba. Kiba got into his stance while Sasuke looked bored. The instructor dropped his hand to start the spar. Within seconds, Sasuke found himself on the ground. He looked surprised by this. That's when the pain registered and he rubbed his jaw. Kiba appeared above him and looked to bring his foot down. Sasuke rolled out of the way and lashed out with a kick. Kiba darted away and reset himself. Sasuke was back to his feet only to see Kiba in his face. Sasuke threw a punch but he hit nothing. Sasuke got hit again with a back fist. Sasuke steadied himself and threw a kick behind him. Again he hit nothing and he paid for it with another punch to his jaw. Everyone watched with shock as Kiba's hit and run tactics were beginning to wear down Sasuke. He was also faster than before. Sasuke couldn't keep track of him. Kiba decided to end the fight. Lunging at high speed, Kiba slammed his shoulder into Sasuke's gut. Sasuke felt the air leave his lungs. He was sent flying outside of the ring. Sasuke tumbled a bit before lying on his stomach. The instructor ended the fight and Kiba was the victor. He checked Sasuke over. The last Uchiha was okay but he just needed to get his breath back. Sasuke's fangirls were also checking Sasuke over and glaring at Kiba for hurting him. Kiba wasn't scared and was just happy that he was the winner. Kiba and Akamaru were hanging with the others on a hill. Kiba just couldn't stop talking about his victory. It was starting to get Shikamaru's nerves. Okay, enough Kiba. You won, Sasuke loss, we get it, Shikamaru said with an annoyed sigh. Jeez man, I was just enjoying my win. Why do you have to rain on my parade? Kiba demanded. Because I don't care that you won. 
I bet that you did all that training just to beat Sasuke. Now, you're going to go back to your usual training methods, Shikamaru said. Why would I do that? Kiba asked with confusion. The others looked at Kiba. Why would I go back to my old ways? Didn't you see what I did to Sasuke in the ring? That was only a month of the training that my mom put me through. Can you image if I continue that training until I graduate in three years? I will be awesome. That's a pretty good point. It took me a month of really paying attention in my calligraphy class to get up to that skill of writing. If I continue on this track like Kiba, I might be able to learn some of that cool few in Jutsu, like barriers or seal removal or cursed seals, Naruto said excitedly. Yeah, Naruto gets what I'm talking about. You guys should get in on it. Don't you guys want to be ahead of the class? Kiba asked. It sounds like too much work, Shikamaru said with a sigh. Kiba and Naruto just frowned at him but Choji looked at his two friends with some curiosity. It had been a week since the talk with his friends and Choji was still thinking about what was said. While Choji mostly followed Shikamaru's way of thinking, he wouldn't lie to himself and say that he wasn't envious of Naruto and Kiba. Naruto's prank on Sasuke was still the talk of the class. The fact that no one could prove that he did it only made Naruto bolder. His next prank that he did on Mizuki was really funny. Naruto was taking his sealing art to the next level. Kiba was a different story altogether. He had officially become the fastest kid in their class. He had only gotten a little faster since his win against Sasuke but it was noticeable. The obstacle course record that once belonged to Sasuke, now belonged to Kiba and it would never be broken. Kiba enjoyed it and he kind of lorded it over the rest of the class. Still, he was still envious of the two because they were actually doing something productive. Choji walked around the compound of the Akimichi in deep thought. That's when he came across the main training hall of the compound. He peeked in and watched as several Akimichi kids were using a staff. They follow the instructions of the teacher. Choji just looked at the class and was intrigued by what he was seeing. As he watched, he did not see someone come up behind him. Choji? The voice said. Choji jumped up and turned around to see a good friend of the family. His name was Dodo Akimichi. He was a very skilled veteran of the Third Shinobi World War. He was now retired and was on the council of the clan. He was like a second grandfather to him. Oh, sorry about that. You kind of scared me there, Choji said. Dodo just smiled at the boy. He then looked into the dojo then back at Choji. Are you interested in learning the clan's staff style? He asked him. Choji just rubbed his head and chuckled. Chiru was humming a tune as she made dinner for her family. As she cooked, her husband entered the kitchen. She was about to chase him away when she got a good look at him. He had this surprised look on his face and it worried her. Honey, what's wrong? Chiru asked concerned. I, I don't really know. I was coming from a meeting and I ran into Dodo. He told me that Choji has signed up for staff training. Choza said. See Choji, our Choji? Chiru asked with shock. That's when Choji entered the kitchen. Hey mom, is dinner ready? I'm really hungry, Choji said with a grin. His parents just looked at him and he was starting to get worried. Shikamaru was annoyed. He didn't even pay attention to the lesson that was on something he was interested in. He was just so frustrated with his three friends. How could they do this to him? He just didn't understand why they would do this. It was because of them that he was in this situation at home. It all started two days ago. Flashback Shikamaru and Shikaku were just sitting around doing nothing. It was a good day for the two as Yoshino was nowhere to be found. That meant that they could just lounge around for a while and relax. After about an hour, Yoshino returned and their relaxing was over. She then walked right up to Shikamaru and dropped two bags in front of him. Shikamaru looked at the bags and saw that they were full with books. He looked up to her and saw that she was serious. What is this about? Shikamaru asked. This is about you acting like a lump while your friends are doing something. I know about Naruto's calligraphy and sealing jutsu. I also know about Kiba's improved abilities. Even Choji is doing something. I just learned that he is taking two days out of the week to learn staff techniques from his clan. Shikamaru was surprised to hear that about Choji. So, why aren't you doing anything? That just sounds too troublesome to do, Shikamaru stated. Well I'm not going to let you fall behind just because it is troublesome. You have to read through all these books and pick something to learn. If you don't, I'm going to sign you up for those classes after the academy is let out, Yoshino said. Shikamaru looked at her with wide eyes. All she did was grin at him. Present Shikamaru blamed his friends for this and decided to get back at them for it. He watched the window as Naruto and Kiba appeared from their underground escape route. They only got two steps when they heard Erika's voice. So, this is how you've been escaping, 
Iruka said with an annoyed tone. Well, I'll fix that after I fix you. The two attempted to bolt but Iruka was too quick. Both boys found themselves frozen in place and could not move. They both noticed a ceiling array below them. Naruto instantly knew that there was no way to escape as he did not have the chakra control to break out of this. Iruka quickly tied the two up and dragged them back inside. From the window, Shikamaru looked on and was intrigued by what he saw. While he was smirking at the fact that the two got caught, he was first surprised at how he froze the two in their place. He knew that his shadow possession jutsu could do something like what he did but it wasn't that technique. He decided to ask Iruka about it after class. Iruka was grading papers as the class filed out of the room. He was focused on his work when Shikamaru walked up to him. Iruka thought that the boy was going to ask for some type of reward but he noticed that he was waiting for everyone to leave. Once the room was cleared, Shikamaru faced him. Something on your mind Shikamaru? Iruka asked. Yeah, it's about that thing you did to catch Naruto and Kiba. I've never seen anything like that. It was something like my shadow possession jutsu, Shikamaru said. Oh that, it's called the string light formation. It's a barrier ninjutsu. Iruka answered him. Barrier ninjutsu? Shikamaru asked. Barrier ninjutsu is when the user can erect barriers that can be used to protect themselves, or to trap an opponent, amongst other various uses. I dabbled in the art because it wasn't too hard. I wanted to do something that no one else had. I'm not a master of the art but I know enough to surprise even the strongest of opponents, Iruka said. Is that so? You wouldn't have a book on it would you? Shikamaru asked. Iruka looked at the boy with shock. Ah, uh, sure, I might have the book here. Just give me a moment and I'll get it for you, Iruka said and went to get the book for Shikamaru. When night came upon Konoha, Yoshino checked on her son. She smiled when she saw him with his face and a small little book. This made her happy that he was taking this serious. In the coming years, Yoshino would regret her decision to push her son into learning something. Naruto groaned as he looked at another failure. He couldn't understand why this was so had. It was nothing more than a freaking illusion. That's what Iruka said to him. So why? Why couldn't he do this damn clone jutsu? He looked on as the two dead looking clone disappeared. He sat on the ground and wondered what he going to do. While he could do the other two jutsu with ease, the clone jutsu always tripped him up. He did not want to fail another test but what was he going to do? Looks like you're in a pickle kid. A voice said, gaining his attention. Naruto turned and faced the voice. He was surprised to see that Aviki person. He hadn't seen him since that exercise they did. He was curious as to why he was here. Hey, what are you doing here? Naruto asked bluntly. Iviki wasn't offended but he looked amused. I was just walking around and I saw you attempting to do something that is kind of out of your reach, Iviki said. Naruto shot right up and looked at the man with a frown. I can get this stupid jutsu. I just need to train more, Naruto exclaimed. He never did like it when people doubted him. Iviki didn't look intimidated by the dirty look and just sighed. Tell me something kid. How can someone like you come out with a great way to change the academy be so clueless? Naruto was starting to get angry by the man's insults. You can get angry all you want but it's the truth. You can only get so far by just rushing into things and expecting it to work. I've kept up with those exercises that the class is going through now and every time I see your name, you've done well. Still, you can't figure out why this jutsu is too weak for you to do. Iviki explained. Too weak, what are you talking about? Naruto asked with confusion. Figure it out kid. You can't just expect the answers to come to you. You have to go out and find it, Iviki said and walked away. Naruto just gave the guy a dirty look but he couldn't help but think about his words. Was he missing something about this jutsu? Naruto decided to go and find out what the trick was. Iviki watched him leave. He saw the direction that he was going and just smirked. He continued on his way to his office. Naruto was looking at the book that he found in the library. It was on a clone jutsu and he was even more confused. The jutsu did not require too much chakra and he wasn't using that much. What was that guy going on about that this jutsu was too weak? Annoyed and frustrated, he made his way out of the library. He walked around for a while, still thinking about what was said to him. What could Iviki mean? So deep in thought, Naruto bumped into someone. He quickly looked at who he bumped into and saw a regal looking woman. He recognized her though as one of Mrs. Nara's friends. Sorry Mrs. Yamanaka, I should have been watching where I was going, Naruto said nervously. It's quite alright. It must have been something important for you to not be concentrating, Noriko said. Yeah, this jerk messed with my head about a jutsu that I'm trying to master. He said that it was too weak for me but I'm doing exactly what the instructions are saying. 
I'm using as little chakra as possible to complete it. Naruto explained. Are you sure about that? I mean, are you positive that you are using the correct amount? Unless you're a sensor type of shinobi, I don't know if you can actually say that. Noriko explained. A sensor type of shinobi? What's that? Inoiki Yamanaka couldn't help but smirk at the stupid look that Naruto was giving him. When his wife came to the flower shop with the boy, he was curious as to why. When he learned of Naruto's problem, he decided to help the kid out. Choza and Shikaku didn't seem to have any issues with him so he thought that he would do them a solid. When he explained Naruto's problem to him, the blonde was in shock. B but I'm using the least amount of chakra. I know I was. Naruto argued. Sorry but that's not true. Your lowest amount is actually enough for a C-ranked jutsu. If you were planning on making a thousand clones, then you have the chakra but for two, there's no way for you to succeed. I don't even think with years of chakra control exercises will help you. It's actually something amazing Naruto. You're still growing and with your growth, expect your chakra to grow with you. Inoiki explained. He looked at Naruto and saw that he was disappointed. Inoiki knew why because he would not be able to pass the academy without creating two perfect clones. After a while, Naruto's head popped up. Inoiki and Noriko looked on as Naruto seemed to be thinking about something. After what seemed like a long while, Naruto got a grin on his face. He then looked at the two elder Yamanaka. Thank you for your help. I know what I must do now, Naruto said. He ran out of the shop, nearly running down Ino. He shouted a sorry before continuing on his way. They could hear him cheering about something. The two looked at each other and wondered what was going on. Naruto was carrying several scrolls that he just checked out of the library. They weren't jutsu scrolls but they were chakra theory scrolls. While Naruto was a little bummed that he couldn't do the clone jutsu, he suddenly got inspiration by a story the old man told him about the second Hokage. He liked to create jutsu so why couldn't he? If the clone jutsu was out of his reach, why not create his own clone? Naruto made his way home to get to work. It was now lunchtime and everyone was kind of excited for today's exercise. They were excited due to the lecture that they had with their guest speaker, an Anbu commander. He spoke about what the Anbu did for the village. It was a little sugar-coated but everyone got what the Anbu did for the village. The leader of the group of five told them that they will be Anbu for the day and will do an exercise depending of what they selected from the box. They all did this before lunch. Protection duty of a high-level diplomat, that sounds boring? Naruto whined. You want to trade with me? Shikamaru asked. They looked at his paper and saw that he had assassination of a crime lord. I don't think you can. The guy said that this will be the mission you have to do once you choose it, Kiba said. The two sighed in disappointment. Unknown to the group, a pair of annoyed eyes were looking at them. It was as if the eyes were trying to forcefully dig into their souls. These eyes belonged to the current rookie of the year, Sasuke Uchiha. One could only wonder why he was even giving the losers the time of day. It had to do with the past couple of months in which he saw the four in a different light. He never did get Naruto back for his prank, even if he could not prove it. He followed the blonde and watched as he went to some calligraphy teacher. He didn't really care why he was doing calligraphy but he saw nothing really new in Naruto's routine. He would have spied at him at home but somehow, the loser had some type of security that gave him a bad shock. Then there was Kiba. He never really accepted the win that the mutt gained over him. It was a blow to his pride that burned deeply. From what he saw of Kiba and his dog, they jogged a lot. He couldn't get closer to his home due to the dogs that were always around. He saw that he was wearing weights and tried it himself. He got tired of the exercise after two weeks. He didn't feel any change and dismissed it. He kept spying on Kiba, looking to see anything else but he kept to his routine and did not change anything. It was frustrating because Kiba kept getting faster. Then he saw changes in the two slackers of the group. Shikamaru didn't seem to do much but he was getting lessons from Miruka after class. Apparently, he was learning how to create barriers. Sasuke laughed that off as something weak. Choji apparently was learning how to use a weapon because he saw him doing drills with a staff. From what he saw, he was still a beginner and the style looked more defensive than offensive. While the two did not worry him, he was annoyed that it looked like that they were improving. Sasuke just didn't really like the four. While he was one of the few that still considered them losers and slackers, he could see that they were more skilled than they let on. It also annoyed him that they seemed to excel in this new system while he was only doing average. Not once did he get above any of them when it came to these exercises. What made it even more annoying was the fact that they got praised by the people that administered the exercises while he only got criticized. He didn't like it and it needed to change now. Watching Sasuke, his fangirls could see his frustration and saw that he was looking at the table where the losers sat. 
They did not know why he was frustrated by them but they frustrated him and that was a no-no. They decided to confront the group and get them to stop. They gathered and marched over to the group. Shikamaru saw the group coming toward them and warned the guys. They all looked and saw Ayami and Sakura at the head. Naruto still had a crush on the pink-haired ninja in training but it had kind of fizzled somewhat. When he threw himself in learning his clan's art and improving his own skills, he just didn't have the time or energy to ask her out or to impress her. He also began to see that he was kind of wasting his time due that due to the talk Hana had with him. His crush was still there but it just wasn't as strong. Naruto faced the group with a grin. Hey Sakura, what can I do for you? Naruto asked happily. You can stop bothering Sasuke, all of you can. Sakura stated. The four looked at each other before looking over to Sasuke. They saw him look away from them and then walk off. They then turned back to the group of girls. What exactly did we do to Sasuke? Kiba asked. We don't know and we don't care. For the past couple of months, he's been giving you four the stink eye. It's probably your fault Naruto. That prank you played on him wasn't funny, Emi said loudly. It was never proven that I did that, Naruto joked. Just shut up Naruto. You think that you're so cool but you're not. Just leave Sasuke alone or face the consequences. Sakura threatened. Naruto lost his smile and gave Sakura a serious look. Look, I'm not going to be yelled at for something I didn't do. If Sasuke has an issue with us, let him come and tell us. Sasuke is a big boy that can take care of himself. He doesn't need fangirls coming to his defense, Naruto said. What did you call us? They shouted. I called you guys fangirls. You don't do much because you feel that it would make you all sweaty. You might accuse me of acting cool but I know that I'll be ready for the ninja life. What about you? Naruto asked. The girls were boiling at his words. Naruto just shook his head and walked away before anything could happen. The others followed him, not wanting to be around the group of girls. Everyone who watched was surprised by what just happened. After a while, the group forgot Naruto's words and went to look for the object of their affection. After the lunch, the exercise began. Naruto met up with three others. One of them was Hinata Hyudga. As they gathered with another group that got the same assignment, the Anbu assigned to them faced them. Okay, you guys are Anbu and you are tasked with protection. You must get your diplomat to the entrance from the doors of the academy. Iruka Sensei will be the one that you will be protecting. I will be the assassin. I will also be using clones, disguised as a crowd. Are we understood? The masked woman said. Hi Sensei, they said. I will give you five minutes to plan. The woman said and the two groups decided to plan. Okay Uzumaki, what's the plan? One of the boys said. You trust me with this? Aren't I one of the losers? Naruto mocked. Well yeah but you and your other friends are the only ones who do well in these exercises. So, what's your plan? The other boy said. Naruto just looked at them and smirked. He liked this power he had. Okay, we need to assume that this woman would not just be the main attacker. Something tells me that she might have a hidden surprise, Naruto said. What makes you say that? Asked one of the boys. It's something that Shikamaru did to me in a shogi game. Always expect the unexpected is the motto that I use when I face him. That's where Hinata comes in, Naruto said. The meat girl jumped up when he said that. And me? Hinata asked. Yeah, you're the rock star of the team. With you, we're going to pass for sure, Naruto said with a grin. The group of Naruto. Hinata and the two boys went first. They surrounded Iruka in a diamond formation with Naruto in front, the two boys at the flanks and Hinata in the back. They moved through the crowd with some ease. That's when the crowd started to get rowdy. The two boys kept them for getting close to Iruka and still kept moving. That's when Hinata spoke up. A wolf is M moving, coming up the F flank, Hinata said. The boys nodded and Naruto quickly threw a smoke bomb on the ground. It covered the group and made the crowd back away. From out of the smoke, Hinata and Naruto pushed Iruka through the crowd. They were packed tight and moving fast. They were nearing the entrance when Hinata shouted. Second wolf, hostile close. Naruto moved quickly and caught a hand that attempted to stab Iruka. Naruto quickly disabled him with a quick slash of his kunai. They continued to move through until they reached the entrance. With that, the exercise was over. The two boys ran up to them and told the two that they were able to stop the woman but she just dispelled into smoke. That's when they heard clapping. It came from the Anbu and Iruga. That was very impressive. I do have some criticism. I would not have used such a distraction. It's too noisy and crazy. Also, I would have had the two who captured the first clone immediately return to cover you. However, you used Hinata's Byakugan perfectly and I liked how you identified the danger. 
You have all gotten high marks. The woman said. The group cheered. At the end of class, Naruto was making his way out. He had gotten another high mark and he was going to celebrate. He had asked the two boys if he wanted to join but they just laughed at him. He should have known better but he didn't let it bother him. As he was exiting, he saw Hinata. It looked like that she was waiting for him. Oh hey Hinata, did you want something? Naruto asked. Um, she began but she was just so nervous. Naruto gave her a really confused look. Hinata took a deep breath and faced him. Um, T thank you for be believing in me. I I know that I'm shy but thank why you for having C confidence in me. No problem Hinata. Like I said, you are the rock star of the group. I've read what I can about your Byakugan and it's perfect for that type of mission. I had faith in you, Naruto said. Hinata was blushing red at Naruto's words. Naruto looked at her with confusion. That's when he remembered that Hinata was on his team too. Hey Hinata, you wanna get some ramen with me? You know, to celebrate our victory? Hinata processed his words and was even redder. Naruto put his hand on her head and asked if she was alright and that was it for Hinata. She fainted right there, shocking Naruto. The blonde did not know what to do and quickly went to find Iruka. Hinata was awakened by some type of smell. She shot up and quickly shook the cobwebs out. She looked to see Iruka and Naruto, who let out a breath of relief. W what happened? Hinata asked. You got all red and I thought you were getting a fever. I touched your forehead and you just fainted. Are you okay Hinata? Naruto asked. Um, yes, I think I'm alright, Hinata said. I think that I will take you home Hinata, just to make sure that you're alright. Iruka offered. Hinata nodded and thanked him. Well, I hope you get home safely Hinata. Remember, you and I gotta have that ramen for our victory today, okay? Naruto asked. Hinata nodded and Naruto took off. Hinata smiled at the fact that Naruto still wanted to take her out for ramen. Iruka just chuckled at the situation. Since that day, Hinata had become a good friend of the guys. At first, she was just Naruto's friend. They had that ramen and the two got to know each other. Hinata kept a lot in, something that Naruto noticed but he didn't push. Naruto continued to talk to Hinata at the beginning, during and after class. Everyone thought Naruto had gotten the hint of Hinata's feeling but they realized that he was still just as clueless. It got the two a lot of snickers, which made Hinata blush and Naruto even more confused. After a while, Hinata was introduced to the group. They all welcomed her without any issues. She was still quite shy with them but that was slowly changing as she continued to hang with the group. Even her father was pleased at her changing attitude. He didn't know why the change was happening or who was responsible for the change but he didn't need to know that. Either way, Hinata had become a well-liked friend of the group. Everyone was happy and having a time. Two weeks later at lunch, Naruto was talking to his friends about this great bowl of ramen that he had at Ikirikus. Everyone at the table all looked at him with annoyed eyes as he had been talking about it since class began. They were getting kind of sick of it. With the exception of Hinata and Shino Abarame, they told Naruto to shut up and sit down. As Naruto pouted, Shino looked at the group of friends from behind his sunglasses. He remembered the day he came to sit with these people. One weekend, he was around the Nara's property, hunting for some bugs. He found a really nice species around the area and wanted to catalog them. He must have annoyed the deer in the area because Shikamaru appeared. He asked what he was doing and he told him. Shikamaru allowed him to search for the species as long as he did not annoy the deer. He agreed and continued his hunt. Shikamaru took the deer and went to relax. The next day, Shino approached him at lunch to thank him. He told that he found a bit more than he expected and asked for permission to continue his hunt. Shikamaru told him that it was okay. Naruto found his hunts interesting and asked Shino about it. Shino sat down and began to explain what he did. He was surprised that he had their attention. When Shino came back to the Nara grounds, Shikamaru joined him in his hunt and invited him to lunch again. Since that day, Shino has been an associate of the loser. As they were talking, Sakura came up to them, standing in front of Naruto. Naruto raised his eyebrow and wondered what she wanted. Naruto wasn't exactly one of the people that Sakura liked. After he called her and the rest of them fangirls, Sakura demanded an apology. Naruto refused to give her one as he told her that she owed him an apology for accusing him of something stupid. So why was Sakura here? Naruto, I was wondering if you would come with me for a second? Sakura asked sweetly. Everyone was surprised by the flirty tone that she was using. Excuse me? Naruto asked. I had some time to think about it and I was wrong to accuse you. I have something for you and I would like to give it to you in private. Sakura explained. She batted her eyes at him, 
which made Naruto's cheeks a little pink. He stood up and began to follow her, despite protest. She led him toward the entrance of the academy to give him his gift. Naruto walked behind her but he noticed something in the corner of his eye. Sakura entered first and Naruto followed. That's when something fell on Naruto. It was pink paint. Sakura and others of the Sasuke fan club was laughing at what just happened to him. It was the perfect payback for what he said. One of the girls had a camera on her and was about to take a picture until she heard a feminine voice sputtering and spitting out paint. She then began to sob about the paint in her hair. The girls were confused until a small ball landed in between them. It suddenly exploded, covering them in an orange mist. They all came out of the entrance, each of them looking very ridiculous. Everyone in the yard was have a time, laughing at them covered in orange. Sakura was the most mortified. Did you really think that would have worked on me? Naruto asked from their left. He had his arms folded and gave them a bored expression. The girls were furious and charged at him. Naruto avoided them by running up the wall and dashing off. The girls were on his heels as he laughed at them. It would take several instructors to catch them all. Iruka looked at Naruto who was amused and Sakura who was pissed. Iruka just sighed as he turned to Naruto. Okay Naruto, for now on, all of your paint bombs are forbidden within the academy. This is my only warning. He then faced Sakura. I will allow you and the other girls to go home for today but tomorrow you will be cleaning the mess that you all created. All he's getting is a warning? Look at what he did to us, Sakura shouted. You instigated this Sakura. Naruto may have told you something that you did not like but you attempted to embarrass him by dumping that paint. Naruto did nothing wrong but get you back. As of right now, you and the rest of the fan club are to leave Naruto and his friends alone. Am I understood? Iruka asked with seriousness. Yes sir, Sakura said meekly. He motioned them to leave. Naruto left first but he did get one last word in. He called her shallow under his breath and walked out. This made Sakura mad but she had more pressing issues to deal with. Now 10 years old, each one of the guys were improving on their skills. They had progressed well since they were 9. Kiba was still the fastest of the class, Choji was improving on his staff techniques, Naruto was using his Fuinjutsu for fun and Shikamaru was showing his mother how well he can use barriers, something that enraged her to no end. As they continued to improve, they would start to find new interests. One of those interests started with Kiba. Kiba was jogging a new route with Akamaru. He did it pretty early on the weekends due to the chores that he had to do. He was now wearing 15 pounds on each wrist and ankle while Akamaru carried 15 as well. As they jogged the new route, which was twice as long as their old, they came upon a sight that confused them. They saw a man. He was a tall and well-built man with high cheekbones, thick eyebrows and black hair cut in a bull style. He wore a green jumpsuit, orange striped leg warmers and the standard Konoha flak jacket, which was unzipped. What confused the duo was the fact that he was walking with his hands and had on some stone slippers. Kiba watched curiously until the man whipped her head around to face the two. He saw them wearing the weights and gave them a toothy grin. He flips to his feet and faced the two. Ah, such a beautiful day for some training. Am I right? Guy exclaimed. Ah, uh, sure? Kiba said with caution. Guy got into his face and startled the two. He looked at his wrist and ankles. I see that you have recently upped the weights. This is great. You are the epitome of youth. He then pulled out two green suits like his. One was given to Kiba and one to Akamaru. If you wish to get a really good spring when launching the tunneling fang, do a hundred squats daily. I am now off. Enjoy the rest of this youthful day. Jumping back on his hands he sped off, leaving one very confused kid and dog. Maybe we need to report this. I mean, the guy is clearly crazy, Shikamaru said after Kiba told him about the encounter. I don't know. This jumpsuit is kind of cool, Naruto said. What do you know about fashion? You think orange is a ninja color, Kiba spat. Naruto gave him the middle finger. Either way, he did give pretty good training advice. He seems to know what he was talking about because my mom agreed. She also told me that if I wear the jumpsuit, I was a dead man. The group just continued to eat lunch and talk. Naruto was escorted to the Hokage's office by the Anbu. He was told that the old cage wanted to see him about something important. When he entered the office, Naruto took on a serious expression when he faced him. Hiruzen missed that smile that he would come in with. Hopefully, he could get it back today. He has Naruto sit down and the two face each other. It's good to see you Naruto and I'm happy that you did not give my Anbu any trouble. I called you here for two reasons. The first is to apologize to you. This stunned Naruto a little. You do have a point. I could have told you about your clan. 
I know that your life in the village is not one that a young child as yourself should have. I could have given you some measure of happiness by telling you about them. However, in that same token, I did it to protect you. I know that you read that book your friends gave you. You know what happened to your clan, Hiruzin said. Yeah, I know. I guess you have a point there. Still, you could have told me about them, Naruto said. I know and again, I apologize for that. Perhaps we can start over Naruto. I do miss you coming around, Hiruzin said. Yeah, why not old man? Um, are there any more secrets that you have kept for me? Naruto asked. Yes, I have but I will make a deal with you. I will tell one of those secrets when you graduate. For now, I'm asking you to be patient. I guess that's fair. So what was the other thing that you wanted to talk about? I'm curious about your little ceiling array that you placed in Ms. Kawakami's shop. It seems to have worked really well, Hiruzin said. Is she okay? Naruto asked with worry. She was one of the few who was nice to him. She was the one who sold him his ink, brushes and paper. She was complaining about someone breaking in and taking supplies. Yes, she is fine and the culprit has been captured. I need to know what exactly did you do? He asked the boy. Oh, it's a wicked cool array. I write seals around points of entry right and if the seal is broken in any way, the security kicks in. You get about two steps before you are frozen because of the other seal that is embedded into that array. Seals crawl up your body and you're caught. You aren't moving until the authorities come. It also alerts the victim so they can hide or call the cops. I've improved it some because I realized that it wouldn't work on Shinobi but I've solved that problem. The blonde said with a grin. Hiruzen could only look at Naruto with shock. That was just genius. Naruto covered his bases and it was something that did real good. Who knew that Naruto had the same gift as his father and mother? That is a very impressive array. I was wondering if you would be kind enough to set up that security array for the tower. I will pay you of course and I will help you make this a trademark. It will prevent others from stealing any of your ideas, Hiruzen said. Really? That would be awesome. Do you want what to see my other ideas? Naruto asked excitedly. Hiruzen just smiled at him. The sounds of sticks were clashing against one another. Choji was defending himself pretty well against one of his cousins. The cousin pushed his advantage and Choji was sent out of the ring. The instructor stopped the spar and the two Akimichi faced each other. They bowed at each other and shook each other's hand. Choji was the last spar of the class and they all stood in front of the sensei. I am pleased at the strides that you all have made. There is still room for improvement but that will happen with time and patience. Continue to improve your skills, you are dismissed. The teacher said. Thank you sir. They all said. They all walked off the floor into the locker room. Choji decided to talk to his cousins. Hey Haruki, the boy turned to face him. Choji had something for him. This is a thank you for helping me out for these past months. I don't think I would have been as good if it wasn't for you. Thanks a lot Choji, Haruki said. He opened the bag and got a really yummy smell. Pot stickers, my favorite. He dug it and ate one. He felt that he was in Nirvana because of how tasty it was. Thank your mom for me, he said. Um, actually, I made that for you with my mom's help, Choji said, surprising his cousin. You serious? Wow, this is really good Choji. Thanks again for the food, Haruki said. Choji was really happy about what he said. He made his way home to tell his mother all about it. He asked for more lessons and she was happy to teach him. Shino watched the board carefully. Shikamaru was just the good when it came to this game. However, he was kind of distracted. This was due to the boy's mother slamming the barrier that he created. Shino just shrugged and returned to the game, not wanting to forfeit this game. He was going to beat the Nara genius this time. Shikamaru was walking around the streets. After finishing his chores for the day, he decided to head into town to get a new barrier to learn. Yoshino had threatened Iruka, the library and several others to not give Shikamaru any more material about the subject. Shikamaru thought that was pretty hypocritical of her since it was her who pushed him into learning that in the first place. Surprisingly, his father came to the rescue. Without her knowledge, Shikaku would get him a scroll that he could learn from. Knowing Shikamaru, it would take him a couple of months to get down. He told Shikamaru that he was proud that he was learning something else. He even teased him about liking the art of barriers. Shikamaru would shrug it off but in reality, he did enjoy learning about barriers. He was making his way to the vendor that his family used. Hey there Shikamaru, what can I help you with? The vendor said. I was wondering if I can get a set of explosive notes. The ones that don't make such a bang, Shikamaru said. Ah, the firecracker ones, I'll get some for you, he said. 
It didn't take him long to retrieve them and he gave it to Shikamaru. He paid for them and left. He now had some stuff to work with and his mother would be none the wiser. He made his way home to learn his second barrier. Eleven-year-old Hinata was preparing to go to sleep. She had an interesting day. Not only did she win in spars today at the academy, she was able to win against her sister Hanabi. She was always hesitant to fight her because she cared for her a lot. By Hyuga law, Hanabi should have been branded with the curse mark. However, due to her own weakness, her father had taken over her training. Seeing her as the stronger sister, the elders favored her and she was spared from that fate. It was something that she let slip to her friends. They understood of her reasons and plight. Naruto asked if that was the reason she holds back sometimes when she joins him and Kiba in sparring. When she confirmed that, Naruto thinks that she's weakening herself. It wasn't that he believed her to be weak but he reasoned that since she's accustomed doing that, she might get herself killed. Hinata did not see it like that and was worried. Naruto thinks that she should have like a battle mode where she would fight without holding back. Hinata thought about it and was actually trying to develop such a mode. It wasn't easy because she was just naturally nice. She tested it out today and she was somewhat successful. She was happy and promised herself to thank Naruto tomorrow. As she stood up to go to bed, she heard a hiss. She looked around until she laid eyes on Naruto. He gave her a grin and waved. That's when she realized that Naruto was watching her in her sleep clothes. Face red and steam coming out of her ears, Hinata fainted. When Hinata opened her eyes again, she noticed that she was in her bed. Her head hurt and she wondered what happened. That's when Hinata saw Naruto at her bedside and everything came rushing back. Seeing that she might faint again, Naruto quickly spoke. Wait Hinata, don't faint on me. We need to talk, Naruto shouted. Hinata quickly got herself under control but it was very difficult. And Naruto-kun, W what are you doing H here? Hinata asked with nervous energy. Naruto looked at Hinata and couldn't help but kick himself. Another a week ago, Ibiki had called him clueless and unattentive. Naruto did not know what he meant by that and Ibiki told him to just stop being hyper and start paying attention to thing around him. With annoyance, the blonde did just that and paid attention. That's when he noticed that Hinata would blush when she was alone with him. He started to notice how nervous she would get around him and her fainting spells was something that only happened with him, no one else. Asking the women he knew, he got an explanation. Tsume, Hana, Ayame, and Miyuki, who laughed at him and called him a fool, all told him that she had a major crush on him. Naruto tried to deny it but he remembered the way he acted towards Sakura. Feeling like an idiot, Naruto decided to talk to her. He sucked into her home and confronted her. So, I hear that you have a crush on me? Naruto asked straight up. Hinata was shocked by this and wondered who told him. Oh man. I can't believe I didn't notice or that no one told me. Did everyone know about it but me? S so you know? I is that why you're H here? Hinata asked. Yeah, I'm here for two reasons. One is to apologize for ignoring your feelings. That was a crappy move on my part, he said. I it's okay. I I know that you aren't that attentive, she said with a blush. Yeah, I'm going to try and change that. The other thing is I was hoping that we can just be friends for now. W what do you mean? Well. After getting over that crush on Sakura, I'm not really into crushes and stuff. I'm not saying that I don't like you or anything but it's more of a friend type of like. Not to say that it might not change or anything, I guess what I'm trying to get across, Naruto was cut off by Hinata touching his mouth. I get it Naruto and I accept that. We are still friends, Hinata said with a smile. Naruto grinned as well and was glad to still have his friend. That's when the door to Hinata's room was thrown open and several Hyuga, including her father, entered the room. Hyashi looked at Naruto with his Byakugan blazing. What do you think that you are doing in my daughter's room boy? He demanded. Naruto gulped and saw the looks on their faces that promised pain and suffering. I wasn't doing anything, I swear. I only came to see Hinata and talk to her about something. I only saw her in her pajamas, Naruto exclaimed. That did not help him as the group closed in on him. Alright, let's calm down and talk like gentlemen. Then talk about this, smoke bomb. Naruto tossed something on the ground, which exploded covered the room in an orange smoke. Naruto jumped out of the window and ran. The Hyuga were close behind him. Okay, I think that we can settle this calmly. Naruto no matter what you think, sneaking into a girl's room is wrong and should never happen. Kyoshi, I don't believe that Naruto would do anything inappropriate with your child. I will definitely have a talk with Naruto about the birds and bees. With that said, would you please leave Naruto alone from now on? Hiruzen asked. The two looked at each other before nodding, Hyashi took his leave with a finally glare toward Naruto. 
He needed to speak with his daughter. Naruto looked at the old Hokage who just sighed and had Naruto sit down for a very difficult talk. Ha 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 ha. Oh my Kami, my stomach, it hurts so badly. So, not only did you anger the Hyuga, you had to have the talk with the Hokage? Oh man, I wish that I was there to listen in, Kiba said with a tear. Shikamaru and Choji were laughing. You couldn't tell with Shino but Naruto swore that he was smirking. What was worst was that news got out about his actions. The females were calling him a deviant while the males congratulated him and Hinata. The talk he had with the Hokage did not help. Also, he could not help but feel that someone was watching him, prepared to take him out if he even made a move toward Hinata. Nearby, a beautiful Hyuga woman watched from a distance, a kunai in her hand. Her orders were clear from the clan head. She watched careful for any movement. She was a bit concerned because she knew that Hinata cared for the boy. Still, orders are orders. Kiba was out looking for that guy he met during his jogs. One day, he just did not run into the man anymore. He was kind of bummed due to his advice. He really helped him a lot those times he ran into him. Because of the squats he suggested, Kiba's and Akamaru's tunneling fang was better than his sister's. He also gave him some advice about studying a little bit of the tiger style of taijutsu. It really helped him with his claw techniques. Kiba was becoming one of the academy's top fighters thanks to his training and Guy's advice. He had asked his mother about Guy and she told him that he now had a team to look after. Kiba understood but it was coming close to graduation and Kiba wanted another edge. So he and Akamaru began to search for Guy. It wasn't hard and he found the man working with a guy who was a carbon copy of him. Kiba had to rub his eyes just to make sure but he wasn't hallucinating. Might Guy noticed him and gave him that bright smile. Ah, Kiba, and Akamaru, how are you on this clear day, Guy exclaimed. I'm doing good sensei. I was hoping to get some more advice but my mother told me that you got a team, Kiba said. Yes, I have got me a very youthful team. Lee, come here and meet a fellow taijutsu user. Guy ordered. Lee ran up to them and gave the two a salute. Yosh, my name is Rock Lee. It is very good to meet you. Lee greeted excitedly. Yeah, Kiba said with caution. This guy was just like Guy in every sense. He turned his attention back to the older one. So, I was wondering, is there is a way to add my element to my jutsu? Guy got serious and looked at him. There are many ways. I, myself, can do it but I'm afraid that you are too young and not ready to learn such a thing, Guy said. Kiba looked a little dejected but then Guy got an idea. I have come up with an excellent idea. Why don't you join me and Lee in training on the weekends? Lee can use a sparring partner. Sure, I don't mind, Kiba said. Yosh. Let us show our power of improvement, Lee exclaimed. Lee, Guy shouted. Guy sensei, Lee shouted and the two hugged. Kiba was then hit by something that made his eyes go wide. What the hell happened to him? Naruto asked the two Janan. He was just coming from a calligraphy lesson when a Hyuga and a girl with two buns in her hair stopped him. Apparently, they needed him to come collect his friend. Naruto was confused until he found Kiba laying on the ground in the fetal position. Even Akamaru was in that position. They must have looked into the sunset. It's the only answer, Tenten said. What the hell does that mean? Naruto demanded. Pray that you never get to see it Uzumaki. It is the most evil thing ever. Neji commented. Naruto just looked at the two and back to Kiba. What in Kami's name was the sunset? Choji pushed his opponent hard and made sure that he could not counter. Choji made a skilled sweep with his staff, knocking the larger boy off his feet. Choji thrust the butt end of the staff in the guy's face and waited. The boy nodded, admitting defeat. Choji mentally cheered for his victory and couldn't believe. He had finally won a match. It had taken a year but Choji had finally won. He helped his opponent up and bowed to him. He did the same and the two shook hands. They then bowed to the sensei that was happy for their match. Shikaku entered his home and made his way to greet him wife. He knew that she might be in the kitchen making supper. When he entered, he found Yoshino right where he thought she would be. He gave her a kiss, letting her know who it was. He looked around and he did not find his son. Where's Shikamaru? He asked. He and his friends are going to some secret spot where they hang out. Yoshino answered. So, that means he's with Choji? Kiba and Naruto? Shikaku asked. Don't forget Akamaru. You know how he is, Yoshino said with a chuckle. I'm surprised that he didn't trap you in a barrier and went out, he said. Something I know is you're doing but I allowed him to go because we came to a compromise. He does his work, no matter how troublesome, and I will let him have some fun. Plus, he hasn't figured out how I have been getting out of his barriers as quick as he put them up, she said smugly. Oh, 
He knows that Naruto helped you, Yoshino snapped her head to look at him. Shikamaru's known for a while now. Naruto didn't give you up but he knows that you have been tutoring Naruto in exchange for some of his seals that disrupt them, Shikaku said with a grin. She glared at her husband and muttered something about smarty pants Naraman. Shikaku just chuckled and read his paper. It was now time for the group to take their final exams. Everyone was excited and ready to pass the test to become ninja. As they entered and awaited the test to begin, someone entered the classroom and all conversation stopped. They all looked at the person and was surprised who it was. Naruto looked at the class who was looking at him. What the hell are you looking at? Naruto asked irate. Everyone looked for a little while before going back to their conversation. Naruto took his seat while Kiba was chuckling. He glared at him before sulking. Would you stop pouting Naruto? So, they got you new clothes and forced you to wear it. Just man up and deal with it, Shikamaru stated. Naruto looked at his new clothes. He now wore a sleeve blue shirt with orange trim with a funnel-like collar. It was accompanied with blue trousers that are orange from the knee down and just a little short of being full-length pants. Attached to the pants, were some holders that Naruto could put scrolls in. I don't have an issue with the clothes. I just don't understand why each of your mothers took all my good clothes and burned them. Then, they dragged me around, forcing me to wear clothes and dragging me back to my apartment. Oh, did I mention that they burned all my clothes? Naruto snarled. Well, you were being unreasonable. It also didn't help when you said to them, you and what army? Choji answered. Naruto just continued to pout as Iruka and Mizuki entered the classroom. When Iruka saw Naruto, he gave the blonde a smirk. Naruto growled because Iruka refused to help him from the crazy women. Iruka just began the test. Naruto stood in front of the two instructors and waited. He was really eager to show the two what he had for them. The written part of the test was a breeze for him due to the tutoring that Yoshino gave him. He would have to thank her for all her help. The physical exercises were also easy for him due to his training with the Inuzuka clan. He was a little sour that he was third behind Sasuke but it was made up by Kiba who was number one. Then there was a mission part of the exam that was new. It was a really hard mission that he had to write a report about. He thought that he did well. Now it was time for the ninjutsu part. Naruto took a breath and relaxed. Iruka just looked at him and hoped that he would pass. He did notice how hard he worked and was very proud of him. He had done the first two jutsu with ease, so he curious as to how well he can do the clone jutsu. Okay Naruto, the next jutsu, Iruka said. Naruto nodded and does a few hand seals. Both instructors noticed that these were not the hand seals for the clone jutsu. Naruto finished his seals and called out his jutsu. Leaf clone jutsu. Naruto called out. In a swirl of leaves, two perfect copies of Naruto appeared. Iruka was happy but curious about this jutsu. Naruto. Could you explain this jutsu of yours? Iruka asked. Well, why don't you find out? Just punch the clone and you will see the greatness of my original jutsu, Naruto said with a smile. Iruka stood and made his way to the clone. He threw a punch that connected with the clones. The clone exploded and Iruka had to cover his eyes. Leaves circled him and blinded him from view. That's when he felt the tip of a kunai to his back. The leaves settled and Iruka was very impressed. Naruto that was an incredible jutsu. You created it? Iruka asked. Yep, two years of hard work and research finally paid off. I have another one if you want me to show you, Naruto said. No, 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 you have shown enough Naruto, Iruka said. He grabbed a forehead protector but he stopped and turned back to Naruto. He then undid his forehead protector and knelt down. He surprises Naruto by tying it to his forehead. Naruto looked at his teacher who just smiled. You've done really well. I'm proud of you Naruto. Naruto nodded and hugged Iruka. He then ran out of the room cheering and laughing about his passing the exam. Unknown to the two of them, Mizuki was annoyed and disgusted with the scene. He also cursed the fact that Naruto passed his test. While he would admit that his jutsu was impressive, it messed with his plans. He now had to do this on his own. It was nighttime and the party at the Inazukas was in full swing. Naruto and Kiba were having a fun time and Shino was just sitting quietly. Tsume watched with a smile as she was happy for the boys. She was very proud of them and how far that they have come since they met all those years ago. She was also very happy that the elders were very supportive of the friendship. They even allowed her to give Naruto a tattoo that symbolized that he was an ally of the Inuzuka. That meant that they could legally help Naruto if someone came after him. Tsume would protect the young blonde from all that would do him harm. She would do anything for her son and surrogate son. Tsume just watched with a smile as the three boys just continued to party. Around the same time, 
a figure slowly opened the window to the Hokaye's private library. They slowly entered the room and closed the window behind him. He did not make a sound as he made his way to the scroll that held the most powerful jutsu. Once he took this scroll to his master, he would be given power like he always dreamed. As he was about to reach for the scroll, his body froze up. He tried to move but he just couldn't. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw markings on his arm. He was wondering what the hell this was. That's when the lights went on. Since he couldn't move, he did not see who it was until they were right in front of him. When they saw who it was, they were scared at the glare of the third Hokage. Hiruzen just looked at the man in front of him and grunted. I always knew that there was something wrong with you Mizuki. Your will was always so corrupted and I should have kept you away from the future of this village. I will not make the same mistake again, Hiruzen said. But how? Mizuki asked. I've had a new security system put into the tower. It is very simple but very good at catching traitors. In fact, you know the person who put this in. You have tried to sabotage him secretly for years until he made friends with some clan heirs, Hiruzen said with a grin. That demon created this? How can you trust that thing with our safety? Mizuki snarled. I trust Naruto because despite bigots like you, he still wishes to protect this village. He has more loyal and love for this village than has scorned him since the day of his birth. I trust Naruto because like his father and mother, his will of fire burns brightly while each passing year. Your fire, however, has come to an end, Hiruzen said. Two Anbu arrive and appear on either side of Mizuki. Tell Iviki to do what he must, no restrictions. I know that this was not his doing alone. Also, let him know that Mizuki was one of those people who attempted to hold back a potential Hokage. There was a chuckle from the Anbu before they took Mizuki away. Hiruzen reset the security system before leaving the library. Naruto was in Hiruzen's office, sipping on some tea. His receptionist gave it to him because Naruto was suffering from a minor hangover. Apparently, Kiba had sunk into his mother's liquor cabinet and gotten some of her stash. Lucky, they were not too drunk as they were caught by the woman. Hiruzen found it quite funny. After another sip, Naruto turned his attention to Hiruzen. So, you said that you wanted to let me know something? Naruto asked. Yes, I have three things to tell you. The first thing I will get out of the way quickly. Your messaging system has been reviewed and implemented. The head of the department will be requesting your help something soon but it really impressed everyone at the meeting. I will be setting up an account for you so that you will be compensated for your hard work, Hiruzen said. Thanks for that old man. What are the other two things? Naruto asked. He watched as Hiruzen got serious. The second thing I would like to tell you is something that is very serious Naruto. I wasn't really going to tell you until you were a little older. However, I believe that you deserve to know. Naruto was confused and sat up straight. What I am about to tell you will shed some light on why you have been treated unfairly. Hiruzen explained. You. You know why I've been treated unfairly? Yes, I do. It goes back to your birth, the day of the Nine Tails attack. What you and your generation are taught is that the fourth Hokage defeated the Nine Tail Fox. The truth is Naruto, is that the fox was not defeated but sealed. Naruto looked a little confused and wondered what could contain the strongest demon alive. That's when he remembered an incident while he was training. When he was doing chakra control exercises with Kiba and Hinata, Kiba noticed a tattoo on his stomach. He saw it and was amazed that it faded when he stopped channeling chakra. That's when it finally hit him. The fox was sealed within me? That tattoo on my stomach is actually a seal? Naruto asked with shock. Hiruzen nodded. Naruto was starting to panic a little. But why me? What makes me so special? Did my parents give me up knowing that I was chosen? That leads me to my third thing. The truth is that the Nine Tails has been entrusted to your clan since the reign of the first Hokage. Naruto's eyes went wide at that. The first container was the wife of the first, Mito Uzumaki. When Mito was nearing the end of her life, your mother, Kushina Uzumaki, was chosen by the clan and Konoha to be the next container. She had a special chakra that was able to restrain the demon fox. You are the third container only because something happened during your birth that caused the release of the fox. Hiruzen explained. My birth? So, the village was right about me? Naruto said sadly. No, they aren't. I know for a fact that someone caused the release. We took every precaution because we knew that when a female container goes through birth, their seal weakens. We had a top seal master with your mother the day of your birth. Someone was there to distract them from keeping the fox from escaping. For years, I have been investigating because that led to the death of my wife. Whoever was there did so with ease. Hiruzen explained. Naruto nodded at that. 
So because I had Uzumaki blood, the fourth Hokage used me to seal the fox? He asked. With the blessing of your mother and father. It wasn't that they did not love you Naruto. In fact, they died saving you from certain death during the sealing. They loved you very much and were very happy to have you. If they were still alive, they would shower you with the love that you deserve, Hiruzen said. Naruto sniffled before turning his head away. Hiruzen watched as Naruto rubbed his eyes. He turned back when he composed himself. They stayed in the room in silence until Naruto spoke. Thanks for telling me old man. I just need to process all this, he said. I understand. I will leave you to your thoughts, Hiruzen said, excusing Naruto. The blonde nodded and left the office. Was he was sure that Naruto had gone, Hiruzen let out a sigh. It was the hardest thing that he had to do today. While he did not lie to the boy, he did not tell him everything. There were some things he had to keep from him. However, he felt that with everything he just told the blonde, he would end up hating the fourth Hokage for what he did to him. That was not something he wanted. He turned to look at the picture of the man and sighed sadly. I hope that he will not hate you Minato. I hope that he, understands that you could not ask anyone to sacrifice their child if you couldn't do it. I hope that Naruto does not grow to hate you, his father. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on my other social media accounts. Anime God here, and I'm signing off.